I'm here with Joe Kerwin, who farms near the horse and jockey in Thurl, County Tipperary. Um, now, Joe, just tell us a little bit about your farm today. Well, our farm today is different than it was seven years ago. Seven years ago, we were farming Holstein cows at high yields and milking 70 of them. And the farm across the road came up for rent and we took it on. We've gone from 70 Holstein cows to 230 almost um, crossbred cows. Um, we originally had planned on stock and uh, units at um, 3.2 livestock units per hectare. But as we, the smaller cows, we became comfortable with them. We have pushed it this year to 3.8 livestock units per hectare. And next year we intend to go over four livestock units per hectare with a little bit of help from an outside block that we've started to rent. And um, so it's quite a change in, in, in relatively small space of time. So Joe, tell me about the weight of the cows. Obviously the New Zealand crossbreds are smaller cows. What, what sort of weight difference have you seen? Well, at the moment we're in transition, so it's easy to see the weight differences. We weighed the cows on the 23rd of July, I think it was, and the lightest cow was 378 kilograms, and the heaviest Holstein was 737 kilograms. So that's quite a difference. So we would have had many of our cows over 700 kilos um, seven years ago, we now have cows as small as, as, as 370, 80, and um, we're happy enough to bring down the size. It is um, a mental issue more than anything else. People with large cows think the small cows can't produce, and as we're going along through our expansion, we realise that these small cows are super efficient. So what do you think the average weight would be now, and what, what are you aiming the, for? The, the average weight this year, um, in the end of July, was 514 kilograms um, so we're now starting to become focusing on, on um, kilograms of solids per kilogram of live weight so last year the cows would have weighed at probably 525 I and mean, we, we did 525 kilograms of solids sent to a uh, sort to the creamery which is the only figure we look at is what's sold off the farm so we were doing one kilogram of solids per kilogram of live weight and we were actually quite happy with that and we were, we were, that would have been ahead of our target for this time in our expansion. But now we're beginning to look at some of the young stock and young stock are, are really um, outperforming those figures and we have some really, really impressive young stock on the ground this year um, and they're really efficient little cows. So I think you've used quite a number of sires. Um, when you first started switching, what sort of bulls were you using? Um, we made the mistake that everybody makes. Um, we had Holstein cows and the thought of using Jersey was just too much for anyone to consider. So we started using Kiwi Cross, which gave us a 25% Jersey, 75% Holstein cow. And... On the heifers, on the, on the maiden heifers, we used Jersey. And then when we got milking these animals, we realised that we had missed an opportunity, which was to use Jersey across the whole herd. And I, I, an awful lot of people in Ireland have made the same mistake. Um, but then, look what you learn from your mistakes. We, we lost a little bit of ground there that we would have got um, much more, much better hybrid vigour by using Jersey, straight Jersey on a straight Holstein. It would have given us a better cow. Um, so now our breeding is, we're, we're in a transition still. We still have some Holstein cows which we use Jersey on. We have Kiwi Cross cows that are around the 500 kgs that we use Kiwi Cross on. And our policy is to use Jersey on all our maiden heifers, which means that sometimes we have five, five and six, seven um, Jersey heifers and we use Frisian on those to bring them, make them a little bit bigger. But we're happy to go to a herd where the cow weight, mature cow weight would be around 480 kilos, we're kind of confident we'd be happy with that weight. And what sort of milk solids will you be aiming for with that weight? Um, well, looking at the young stock performance at the moment, I'm quite confident that um, we will stay, with a 480 kilo, we will still stay above 500 kgs and maybe at 520 kgs milk solids per cow. But we're not, I'm not totally focused on kilograms of milk solids per cow. It's kilograms of milk solids sold per hectare is more important to me. 
with the smaller cow we can shove the stock of mate a little more which means that our solids sold per hectare is going up all the time even though the solids per cow we don't expect to go up any further so where are you with your solids per hectare at the moment well we're we're under 2000 kgs of milk solids per hectare and i expect to go above it quite that's quite an impressive figure um we're on good land here and um we we have a good bit of um, grassland improvement done over the last few years. We finished it this year. We've secured the lease of the farm across the road via an extended lease and some purchase. So we're now set up for another 11 years. So I'm, I'm happy that we can grow 18 tonne and utilise 16 tonne of grass, which means that we can stock quite heavy. Um, we have taken on some outside block and that support block is important to us because we do suffer from drought in of a dry year which 2018 was so i'm now confident that in drought conditions we can still draw in what we call here in ireland zero grazed grass if required it's, it's not my preference but in when we get caught in drought situations i can draw in grass from an outside block right and I think, you know, you, you mentioned just now um, the fact you've got some really impressive youngsters on the ground now coming through into the herd. I believe you've got one heifer at the moment um, that's producing 1.37 times her live weight in milk solids. That must be almost a record. Well, I, I, it's better than that because our, fi our fourth recording came in on Friday. So she's actually, I have her here in front of me, she's 1.41 times her, her live weight as a two-year-old heifer. She weighs 411 kilos on, on the 23rd of July and she produced 581 kilos of solids. Um, if anyone wants to know what she is, she's, um, she's a Sierra, which is an LIC bull out of an integrity, which is a jersey. So she's produced 6,000 kgs of milk at 5.71 fat and 3.93 protein, given her total kilos of solids of 581. So, um, you wouldn't even see her in the field. She's a small little cow. She's five four hundred and eleven kgs, tiny little black cow. Um, she's just super efficient, and um, if we could breed a herd of those, it would be a dream. And um, so that's the kind of efficiency that's beginning to show its face in the herd. So if we can replicate cows like that um, as we go forward over the next five years, it would be great. I'm sure you'd have a lot of farmers in Ireland thinking exactly the same thing with that sort of result. Yeah, well, look at one swallow never met a summer or one cow never met a herd. It's um, can we continue to breed those? But um, it, it is, they are becoming more frequently seen in the herd as the young stock come. And, and this is our first year recording live weight. And um, I was grumbling uh, under my breath when I was asked to weigh them kind of given out but since we weighed them it, it's been a great eye-opener to see how efficient these little cows are and, and um, it's the best thing I've done for many years is to get the live weight of the cows. Did you bring in New Zealand embryos? My friend Mark Ryder of LIC, um, I met him at the Ploughing Championships uh, a number of years ago and we went for a burger and a drink of orange, healthy eating and we sat down and Mark was talking about bringing in some embryos to see how they would perform it in the Irish uh, situation on an Irish farm. And I thought I might be interested in seeing how they perform on my farm. So uh, four years ago, we milked eight of them. This year, we had 17 come into our herd. They, were, they came in as embryos from some of the top cows in New Zealand. Now, I was apprehensive about letting them in because they're not crossbreds, they're, they're pure Frisians and I have a crossbred herd. So it would be difficult for them to compare uh, with my crossbreds, thinking that they wouldn't have the solids. But if you want, I will give you their results for this year's performance. These are 17 embryo heifers that came in, Frisian heifers from a cows in New Zealand. I'll just call it out to you. Um, they produced 500, now this is as two-year-olds, 517 kgs of milk solids. Average fat was 4.76. And amazingly, their average protein was 4.94. With I'm just looking at the records. Many of them done over 4% protein as pure Frisians. Average live weight was 4.459 kgs. And their efficiency of live weight to kilograms of solids, 
They produced 1.12 kgs of solids per kilogram of live weight as two-year-old heifers. Now, that will go up to probably 1.3 um, kgs of solids per kilogram of live weight. So we're looking at super efficient Frisian animals that, if you had asked me where their protein would have been, I thought it would have been around 3.7. Um, to think that it's just short of 4% protein is an amazing performance. And I think those kind of animals are where the, those who are not interested in crossbreeding, those are the animals that um, I think the Frisian guys should be starting to look at for sourcing genetics for their herd going forward. Well, I think that's that's great to hear, Joe. Now, I mean, I believe, you know, you're using, obviously, LIC genetics and choosing those over high EBI genomic bulls. Um, where did this start with you? What made you go this route? Right, well, it, it, there's, there's two questions there. One is, is why they go um, crossbreeding is one reason, and the other is, why don't I use the high EBI genomic bulls? Well, the first reason on the cross, why they go crossbreeding was we had Holsteins and we had been breeding for quite a number of years for volume. And my God, they were good to produce volume. We, we had 10,000 kg cows everywhere and volume wise, they really were good, right? But then the longer it went on, there was no correlation between volume and profit. In fact, there was probably a minus correlation. The higher they went up in volume, the less profit I seemed to have. And when everybody was paid, there wasn't very much left for Joe in the her in, in on the fair and profit wise. But at that time I was starting to watch these crossbred herds and um I knew how efficient they were, how little costs were being put into them, how low their um veterinary costs were, how good their fertility were. And I started to again try a little crossbreeding by using Kiwi Cross, which was my mistake. I should have used Jersey. But anyway, when we got those heifers on the ground I realised, yeah, these little black cows are efficient and they're easier to mind. There's less veterinary bills with them, there's less labour with them, and they last longer. And when I had my Holstein cows, I was one and two and three cents under the creamery average price. Last year, we were 4.3 cents above the creamery average price, which means that last year we produced 1.4 million litres. Every cent is 14,000. So you were able to do the sums that up 4.3 times 14,000. That's what the milk price alone gave me an, an extra profit last year. So um, high solids milk is where we're heading for and that's where we intend to stay going. So that was the reason why we went crossbreeding. And then you asked me then, why don't I use high genomic EBI bulls? Um, I was involved in the AI industry when genomics came on board and I embraced it and I wanted to embrace it very much. But I felt that um, here in Ireland, we exaggerated its ability to drive um, the breeding goals that we were trying to achieve. And it really wasn't for me because I was going to crossbred route. The genomic um, focus was on pure Frisian breeding and Holstein breeding. So it didn't offer me as much as I wanted. Um, I felt it unfairly um, was biased against New Zealand breeding. and. Everybody both in New Zealand and here in Ireland admitted that the fertility of the New Zealand cow wasn't being um, appreciated within the Irish EBI. Um, I felt that those running the programme were exaggerating its ability to drive on genetic gain. So it just wasn't for me. I'm not a gambler. I'm, I like to use proven animals. I like to use them from a large test programme. And we were beginning to see the fruits of using New Zealand and I couldn't see why I would change. And I still haven't seen why I would change. I felt at this stage, if you asked me five years ago, I thought I would be using genomic bulls by now, but I'm not. And the more I see of it, the less I like of it. And I'm happy to stay where I am for the next quite a number of years, I think, yeah. Um, that's good, Joe. I mean, we've talked about solids and we've talked about size. Um, what's happened with the fertility with the use of these crossbreds? Right, well, fertility, and, and probably this is um, enforcing what I should have seen coming. Uh, production is very heritable, so we can adjust our production from high volume, low solids to medium volume, high solids quite quickly. Fertility is less heritable and the improvement on fertility in my herd wasn't quite as quick as I would like. 
it's but it is happening and it's happening very steady we started five or six years ago with 23 percent empty rate and um which was unsustainable we thought we would very quickly go to less than 10 percent we got stuck last year the year before and the year before at 13 percent empty rates this we're talking about empty rates with a 12-week um breeding season now um we had gone from 23 percent empty rates with a 15-week breeding season so there was improvement now at the young stock coming in we have got under 10 percent empty rate this year with a 12 week so that's a it's not perfect it's a big improvement on where i was a number of years ago i wanted to be a bit better um Hugh, we had quite a number of empties in our maiden heifers in the last number of years we have 64 65 heifers this year all in calf so there is improvements happening but not quite as quickly as the um, production improvements and i think i should have seen that but we have made quite a lot of improvement in over five years at the same time okay so let's just talk a little bit about the future um you've obviously come a long way you feel you've still got quite a way to go you say you're in transition at the moment what are your aims for the future um well, all everything we do on the farm is profit focused. Um, we have most of the improvements made on infrastructure. We're just finishing off um, cubicle sheds um, and a bit of concrete work and a bit of slurry storage at the moment. So we don't expect after this year to have much capital investment. Um, on the breeding front, um, we're beginning to enjoy our small efficient cow and I suppose our aim is is to multiply those little cows that we spoke about a moment ago multiply them more and more as quickly as possible into the herd um, I think going forward the governments who are trying to look at carbon footprints and all that will have to look at these little small my little lad there at 411 kgs producing that amount of solids They'll have to look at these as, as a way of reducing carbon fo footprint in the future. We are probably going to use these little cows to shove our stock on it, but they could also be used to reduce your nitrogen usage by having smaller cows requiring less, in, less maintenance costs in their lifetime. So those are the things I think we'll have to start looking at. Um, I don't think there's any limit as to where we can go on solids. I think it's a... a it, it's a non-ending improvement is, is where I would put it. So we'll always target to improve it. Um, our aim, and we're looking at some of these young cows can do, we can do 10% solids with some of these extremely good cows. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have a herd of 10% solids, wouldn't it? So I suppose that's where our target is. Um, we all the time are watching for um, making sure that the cow we breed is a low labour input cow. Um, I have a bee in my bonnet about the excessive use of hormones to improve fertility within herds. I'd like to think that going forward our herd will be non-hormone usage to improve fertility, that it will be the fertility will be purely from genetics only and no intervention whatsoever. So there are things I'd like to look at.